NCAA women's lacrosse quarterfinals here from Evanston, Illinois. It is the number four seed Northwestern Wildcats playing host to the number five seed Syracuse Orange for the right to move on to championship weekend. This is game three of four here today. Earlier, Maryland, no trouble with Florida, 18 to five winners. And then Boston College just beat Loyola 20 to 13 as we get you set up for the 4-5 matchup here today from Evanston, Illinois. Good to have you with us, everyone. Mike Corey alongside Tawarton winner and two-time national champion, Rachel DiCecco. We've got the 4-5 matchup here. Second time these two teams have met this year. What intrigues you the most about this matchup? First matchup went into overtime, which just shows us how evenly matched these teams are. For me, it's going to start at the center circle, Caitlin Mischewski and Jill Girardi. Outstanding talent in this game today. Let's start with Northwestern. Lauren Gilbert, what a season she's having for them. An incredible year for Lauren Gilbert, the graduate student. 70 goals for Northwestern, the workhorse, heart and soul of this team. Season high seven goals in this first matchup, including the OT winner. Lauren Gilbert wants to extend her career into championship weekend. And 25 assists to her docket as well. 95 points for the first team, all Big Ten selection. Megan Tyrell has had to kind of carry this Syracuse team with all the injuries, and now here they are with a chance to move on to championship weekend. Yeah, Megan Tyrell has put this team on her back this year. The second season in a row, Syracuse has had injuries to some of their star players. She has stepped up, earned herself a Tawaraton finalist spot. She is four goals away from tying a single season record. Northwestern D has a work cut out for them today against Megan Tyrell. What about the goalkeepers? Madison Doucette for Northwestern, the senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Madison Doucette had a great game against Michigan, 16 saves. She is playing her best ball of the season at the right time. And then for Syracuse, Kimber Hauer in goal for them, the transfer out of UNC, the junior. Kimber Hauer is, is, is going to be a question mark today. She's having a tough season. She will need to play well in cage today for Syracuse to win. As we see here, both teams raising their sticks in support for the Delaware State women's lacrosse team and the recent racial profiling incident and the Howard women's lacrosse team. Coach Silcott and her team faced discrimination early in the season. We have a lot of work still to do, Mike. Yes, we do. Standing in unity here today before the opening draw with Syracuse and Northwestern. Mischewski, number eight for Syracuse, number 15, Jill Girardi for Northwestern. You talked about it. This is going to be a big matchup today. Two of the top draw specialists, middies in the country. They are one draw apart for the season, 172 and then 173. The first game, Girardi dominated Mischewski. She is happy to have another chance against Girardi today. Our officials for this matchup. John Sherman, Mara Banfield, and Kathy Russo. And April Sherman is at the table. We're underway. And Syracuse wins it cleanly here. Nice job from Mischewski. And right back the other way here for Northwestern to get things started today on their home field. Sam Swart stepped out of bounds there. There is a, a white line sort of five yards behind. Maybe she got a little bit disoriented there, thought she had more room than she did. What a beautiful day here today on the water just north of Chicago in Evanston, Illinois, home of Northwestern. 81 degrees and sunny here today. A complete turnaround from yesterday, by the way. It was about 45, windy and rainy. Absolutely picture perfect weather here at Northwestern. The students are on the beach, lake in the background. It's, it's a really beautiful day. We need a little bit of a breeze coming off of that water, right? <laughs> you can certainly use a breeze. I feel it a little bit right now. It's helping us out. <laughs> Talked about it. Second matchup between these two. Overtime game the first time. Here's Olivia Adamson. She's had a special year, and the ball is deflected as she tried to put it on cage. Gets it back, though. What a tournament she's had already, though, for the Orange. Eight goals in this tournament. She had five against Fairfield. Olivia Adamson, you know, we talk, we talk a lot about Syracuse injuries. Just as a freshman, has really stepped up under the mentorship of Emma Ward, who found herself in that exact spot last mm -hmm. year. Yeah, no Emma Ward this season for Syracuse, injured in the preseason. 
And then talk about some of their other injuries, right? No Emma Tyrell, no Sierra Cockrell. How has this team been able to do it? It's it's incredibly impressive. We asked that same question last year. Most teams, that would have been the end of their season, but players like Schweitzer and Adamson have stepped up into roles and really helped create su a success for this team with the leadership of Meg Tyrell and Emily Harris Chuck. They go behind the net here for Schweitzer, Savannah Schweitzer, who you just talked about. Now it's over to Jenny Markey. Up top of the reset for Sam Schwart. Syracuse. Open play, the shot, the score. They're going to put it in, and on the board first is the Orange here on the road in the quarterfinals. Who other than Meg Tyrell getting the Syracuse Orange started today. They did a nice job of being patient, setting up the exact opportunity they wanted. Meg Tyrell so dangerous from up top with that challenge. A hard dodger and a great finish. See a little bit of a hesitation hop there. Great job by Megan Tyrell. Get this team started, really. Just a few minutes into this game. That is her 200th goal of her career. How about that? Sixth player in Orange history to record 300 career points. And then with that goal right there, 200 now, as you saw it, number 76 on the campaign leading this team. We talked about her right in the open and she has delivered just over two minutes into the contest. Just so impressive. You know, one thing about her is that she obviously has the skills, but she, she is so smart as an attacker. She reads her defender so well and finds the right opportunity at the right time. Syracuse wins the second straight draw here to start the game. Trying to hold on to it, and they do. It's Sarah Cooper. Going to see some Coopers have the senior defenseman for Syracuse as well. Works both ends of the field here, okay? You got a lot of offense with this team, but got to have solid D, and Cooper's been one of the best. Yeah, she is a great leader on that defense for the Orange. Was the ACC Freshman of the Year all time. Second all time at Syracuse and calls turnovers with 98. Yeah, the record is 101. What do you think we're going to see on the offensive sets from Syracuse today? You know, they have sort of this traditional weave offense that they've done over the last few years. But, you know, Gary Gate built this offense, and we've gotten to see Kayla Trainer put her own twist on it, which I absolutely love. They're being really patient here, which I like. They want to possess, not give Northwestern an opportunity. Tyrell again on the save that time was Doucette. Look at the 16 save she had versus Michigan, tying a program single season record. That's pretty phenomenal, thinking about the great years and championship seasons that this Northwestern team has had and great players over the over the years for them. Yeah, I mean, as we said earlier, this is a great time to be playing your best across of the, se as of the season, and that's exactly what Madison just said is doing. All right, right in front, Allie Berkery for Northwestern ties it up and one. Northwestern. Berkery's first goal of the season. Good time to get in here for Northwestern. Just great passing in the midfield there by Northwestern. Allie Berkery sees the opportunity. Slide comes a little late. Nice little flip shot in there. You know, sometimes defensively you think, okay, like, pick me up, pick me up so I can pass. Nobody came to get her. Nifty little flip there for her first goal of the year. How awesome is that for her? You're right, coming in with just one assist. A 20 ground ball, she's second on the team and caused turnovers. And yes, the first goal of the season for her ties this game at one, three and a half minutes in. Traditionally more of a defensive midfielder for Northwestern, but putting a point on the board today for Northwestern. And you know, this is the thing, what, you know, that we know Quickendall, we know Gilbert. When you have players like Berkery and Amonti step up, that depth is really going to help them in this game and if they get into championship weekend. This is the third consecutive time these teams have played in the postseason. Last year, Syracuse with that 21-13 win in the semifinals at Towson. That was the only loss of the year that Northwestern suffered. They were 15-0 going into that game. Yeah, huge upset in the semis last year. Northwestern, as you said, undefeated, really had their eye on that championship in Syracuse despite major injuries to Carney and Harris Chuck. 
Got it in front and putting it in is Aaron Boykendall for Northwestern. So they got two in a row here early and now have the one goal lead. Boykendall with her first 43rd goal of the season. Traditionally more of a feeder, she creates a lot. A lot of their offense originates with Aaron Boykendall. Here just does a beautiful job. Drawing that double. Good ball movement here by Northwestern. See some space there, just takes her underneath. Great job protecting her stick. Getting that off safely. Just kind of standing there for the moment, right? And the defender, and then all of a sudden, boom, a quick move was able to get in front like that and put in the goal for the second for them. Yeah, she took her time. You know, you, you sometimes the, uh, the attackers find themselves in front of the cage and just want to get rid of it. She did a great job taking her time. That's their second goal in just 43 seconds there for Northwestern. And again, Mischewski. This is something we'll be tracking today. Not only draw controls and who wins them, but do they score off the draw control when they get the win? And Northwestern, which got the previous one, did score right off the draw control. So you're going to get Syracuse here leading it 3-1, to one, but Northwestern leading the game 2-1. to one. So it'll be something we'll keep an eye on as we move along here today. The Wildcats have it back. Leah Holmes. Over for Girardi. Shut off the pass a little bit too high that time. It's going to be important for Kimber Howard. You know, they've had Northwestern two shots, two goals. She wants, she wants to get an early save in this game to kind of build her confidence. She's struggled a bit this season, and a save early on will help her kind of get that confidence in cage. And Quackendall for Gilbert. Making a move inside. In front of the cage and falling down him is Al Hansen. It's gonna be Syracuse possession here. There's Hansen, number seven, the senior. Had two goals in the last game. Northwestern's win over Michigan, 15 to 12, to earn the right to play here in the quarterfinals today. This is game three of four. We've got UNC and Stony Brook coming up in our nightcap at 7.30 Eastern right here on ESPNU. Card here. Yellow card. This is going to go against Aaron Quickendall. Right, you heard a check to the head there. You're right on Quickendall, so she's out for Northwestern for the two minutes. Yeah, anytime a, you know stick makes contact with the head, that is going to be a card. Obviously, safety is very important now. Just she ran by her, just caught the ponytail there. It's a little uncharacteristic, sort of undisciplined there by Quickendall. She did, didn't need to certainly make that move, and now Syracuse will have a player up opportunity. Well, and we talked to Kelly Amonte Hiller about that, head coach for Northwestern, now in her 21st season. It's been spectacular, has won nine titles, two as a player, seven as a coach. And that's so magnified in these type of games, right, Rachel, when you get these calls and these cards and the penalties and that's what you got to watch out for Syracuse has a chance to tie it up here Natalie Smith it's over from Maddie Baxter 49 she's got it back to Smith it's sandwiched whistle big hit the Wildcats but Syracuse already with a player advantage and now the free position a lot of contact there from the Northwestern defense. You see that arm extension, you're always gonna get that foul call. Natalie Smith for Syracuse, trying to tie it up. Step check from behind, excellent defensive play by the Wildcats. Yeah, great collapse there on that eight meter by Northwestern. Syracuse did a nice job of being behind the cage ready for that. They're on Tyrell this time, now the pass in front. Loose picked up the rebound for Syracuse. Save to set on the shot that time from Emily Harris Chuck for Syracuse. Two big saves back to back there for Madison Doucette. While their player down, that is huge. 
Now Northwestern can run out this penalty until they're even up if they decide. They want to hold it a little bit, get themselves back even. Geez, think about that whole sequence, right? I mean, we called it, Rachel. They're a player down. Then they get the call. Then it's a free position. They stop that a couple times. They make a nice deflection, by the way, on that free position shot. That's a huge turnaround for the Wildcats. Yeah, huge momentum shift defensively when you're player down and you're able to deny the goal. It's huge for you as a defense, and certainly that momentum will carry in to the offensive end. It's a third save by Madison Doucette for Northwestern. Using up some clock here to get back to even strength. We'll still have 31 seconds on the shot clock. And Poikendall comes back in. Poikendall back in there even now. Gonna get the right personnel on the offensive end. Gilbert feeds behind the net. Cutter comes in, the pass in front, the shot, the score. That's Samantha Smith who puts it in. We, we talked about that momentum shift off the defensive stand with our player down and just great vision and patience there on the feed. Sam Smith with the beautiful finish. Picked up the assist last game, has a goal here today. How about it? Nicely done here by the Wildcats. A little give and go to Hats up, 3-1. Let's go back to last year's semifinals at Towson. It was Syracuse and Northwestern back on May 28th. Northwestern came into this game undefeated 15 and 0. Megan Tyrell, five goals, three assists, six points for Emma Ward. Sam Swart with three goals. Syracuse upset the Wildcats, then faced BC in the national championship where they ultimately lost in the finals. Looking to repeat a final four appearance again this year. Gotta get past Northwestern first. And here is the history between these two in the tournament. There's the first one there for Syracuse. And look at that run that Northwestern went on there, their last championship back in 2012. And I was looking at some of the years of what they've done from that run from 2005 to 2012 for Northwestern. They went 168 and nine with seven national championships and a runner up. An unbelievable run for the Wildcats. And we talked to Coach Amani Hiller about that. When you win so many in a row, they haven't won in 10 years. And she said, we don't look back. You know, this is a unique team. We're thinking about each game. We're not looking back to the, to the championships that we had before. They're focused on this season and just getting to that national stage next weekend. Changed up the player at the draw control for Northwestern. Brennan Dwyer took it that time for the Wildcats, Syracuse now won it. They are up four to one in the draw control category to begin this game here today. Yeah, and this was key. The draw was so key for Syracuse in their win against Princeton last weekend. They're gonna make Lauren Gilbert come back here. She was on a fast break, and when she is on a break, it is always fast. Lauren Gilbert, so speedy. Yellow card here. Sarah Cooper. Yellow card, check to the head. And that is the that is the right call. When there is a yellow card, you have to stop playing. And Northwestern wasn't happy about that, but that's what you have to do. Now they will be player up for two minutes. So Gilbert starts it off here. Player advantage for two minutes for Northwestern. Leading 3-1. Coming up on six minutes to play here in the first. Three in a row have been scored by the Wildcats. Berkery, Koykendall, Samantha Smith. Big opportunity here to create a little bit more separation right now, Rachel, in the early part of this game. Shooting space. Jill Girardi will have an opportunity now, eight meter. Got some space to work with here on that left side. See if she's able to get in underneath, get a shot off. Girardi, 
Got it. Penalty will be released, so play will be even now. Just a nice job there by Jill Girardi on that eight meter. She had a little bit of space on her left. Great vision, kind of went left. Able to sneak it by Kimber Howard. It's a great job. And she didn't have a lot of space on her stick side there, but she used her non-stick side to sort of create that space, pull her stick back, give herself a better angle, as opposed to just kind of going straight towards the cage, she would have cut her angle off. How about as a defender there? How tough is it trying to defend that in that situation that you just described? Yeah, Girardi's really quick off the hash. You know, they want to force her out. They just, she just had that step on them and was able to get her hands free. But traditionally, when she's on that side, you want to pour, push her out and lower her angle. Kayla Trainer, who played for the Orange from 2013 to 2016. Went to championship weekend all four years. Only player in program history to be a four-time All-American. Kayla Trainer, anyone that's had the pleasure of watching her play at Syracuse and the WPLL for Team USA, you know, she's constantly doing things and you, you just think, how, how did she just do that? It's 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 similar, you know, Charlotte North played for Kayla Trainer and you could see that influence that Kayla had on Charlotte. You know, she just does incredible things with her stick. And she's at a different level as a player and now as a coach, it's so great to see her taking this team into the second round. You see here, you know, they're eighth in the country in goals per game. We've got a Tuaritan finalist on their roster. You know, they find themselves down 4-1, but this isn't unfamiliar for them. You know, earlier in the season, they were down 9-2 against Duke in the first quarter, and they battled back and won that game. They were down against Princeton last weekend, battled back and won that game. She talked about the ultimate belief that this team has in themselves. Well, and this was a team that you know, probably should have won that first matchup versus Northwestern. They fell in overtime 16-15 as we talked about. That was actually played indoors right behind us here at the outstanding Walter Athletic Center. This place is unbelievable here on the water. And, you know, they, they built that indoor facility for football and other sports as well, thinking for just practice. But then once COVID hit, they were playing some games inside. So all of a sudden they realized, hey, why aren't we doing this? Because it's, you know, cold weather out here, obviously. So this Northwestern team played all of their home games except for the final two inside. Syracuse back the other way quickly. And a shot from Jenny Markey, and that's off the mark. Great take there by Jenny Markey. Northwestern got away with one there. She was wide open, charging down the alley. Just went a little bit wide. Five shots for each team early. Syracuse one for five. Northwestern four of five. Thought a good time out there for Syracuse. They're gonna kind of settle in. Absolutely a great time out there by Kayla Trainer. Three goals, you know, is not a huge deficit. It starts to get to four or five. It's a little bit harder to come back from. So perfectly, I think that was a great call by Kayla Trainer getting that timeout. Now they've got the draw. They've got an opportunity to settle on their offensive set. Adamson trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, gets in front of the defender and scores. What an individual effort for Olivia Adamson. As you saw there, Megan Carney cleared through space for Adamson as designed just a freshman her 31st goal of the year you'll get to see them run clear through while she's holding the ball there goes carney just a great take goes left i thought she was going back right but she didn't need to it protected her stick kind of tried to lull her defender and just a great job using her body to protect that stick oftentimes i'll try and go back to their right she didn't need to and this is where you can take advantage of winning those draw controls. This is the first time, Rachel, as they lead it 5-1, to one, that they scored off winning the draw control here today, Syracuse. Yeah, we talked about possession, but possession only matters if you're able to finish. And, you know, you see it there for the first time, winning the draw and then getting the goal. Adamson has been spectacular. She's had nine goals already here in the tournament. Five in round one, three in the last game, and her first one here today. This Thursday afternoon in Evanston, Illinois. Third game of four today in our quadruple header coverage on ESPNU. Winner moves on to championship weekend to join Maryland and BC. This is the four five matchup. Then we've got the number one team in North Carolina taking on number eight, Stony Brook. That's at 7.30 Eastern tonight on the U. A great day, 10 hours of women's lacrosse, yep. really. What more could you want for? Mm -hmm. What? 
Nice little Thursday we have. Beautiful set in here today at Northwestern. Six to one, draw controls here for Syracuse. Can they score? Can they make it back to back? It's four in a row. Over to Megan Carney. Good slide, good pick up there defensively for Northwestern and Brennan Dwyer. Adamson again. Good ball movement on, on this Just possession. Say, great ball movement. Yep. I love the flashes into the middle. You said on the save. Probably not the shot they wanted, but it was great ball movement. When they're flashing in the middle, you're trying to get your defenders to turn their heads so you can sneak it in or challenge kind of when you get their heads on a swivel like that. Four saves for Doucette right now for Northwestern on the shot from Tyrell. Now here on the clear comes Allie Burkery. Doucette on pace to match her 16 right. last weekend against Michigan. Sammy White, and Leah Holmes, and Girardi. Northwestern trying to work that pick game. Nice job by Syracuse with the switches there, denying that. They're going to try it on the other side now here. Mm -hmm. Dwyer. Here's Gilbert. We talked about at the start, Lauren Gilbert. Count it. Gilbert scores. 5-2 Northwestern. Lauren Gilbert, her first step is just so quick. Northwestern now, this is a couple times they've been able to get underneath that Syracuse D. They've got to keep them out. Poikendall clears through to give space for Gilbert. Just that quick lateral move, able to get underneath and the finish. As I said, Syracuse cannot allow her that step inside. They've got to op not open their hips and shift her down towards the cage. And Kimber Howard, no save yet in this game. She's got to get her first save in here. 71st goal of the season. Not just this season. This is her 72nd career game today. That's the most on the team. Coach Hiller told us yesterday, Extremely motivated, has some things to prove, and she's out there to try to get this team back to championship weekend. Last game, four goals, her first one of the afternoon here today. And Lauren Gilbert, you know, she's had a great career. I, I was a little surprised to not find her in the, t in the Tuarton finalist mm -hmm. list. I, I truly was. I would imagine she was right outside of that bubble for the finalist. Just an incredible athlete and a leader for this Northwestern team. Yeah, you would think so, right? 70 goals coming in, 25 assists. She was second on the team in draw controls as well, too. She does a little bit of everything. The problem is, who do you take out of that right, list? You've got right. Mastriani, Ortega, North, accordingly, Tyrell. I mean, it's hard to say who you wouldn't include in that, but certainly Gilbert. Well, and, and, and out of those five, right? I mean, I, I think we've heard a lot of discussion about it. And, and does it come down to potentially who wins? you know, the title there on that one. It, so, I mean, what happens if Northwestern does right, it? What's yeah. Gilbert have to say about it? Absolutely. I think it does. Certainly winning the national championships helps, you know, win the Tawaratan Award. But, yeah, I mean, if Northwestern goes all the way, I'm sure they'll have something to say about that, as they should. Saved by Hauer. And that's her first of the afternoon here. And speaking of the Tawaratan, I'm standing next to the only defenseman ever to win the Tawaratan Trophy Award, Rachel DiCecco. Also a two-time national champion from Princeton. And so you know what it's like to get to that point I and mean, in that level. What about going into these games? The next game, the next game, the pressure. Kind of even for like a Northwestern team, it's done it multiple times, right? Yeah, but this is why you play lacrosse to get here. This is the ultimate goal to get to quarterfinals. And then that Final Four experience is so incredible to be there. One of the best four teams in the country with your team. You know, these teams have worked so hard, particularly these last few years with COVID appreciating every game and every opportunity to step on the field that much more with their team. It'll be next weekend, Friday and Sunday in Baltimore at Homewood Field. Home of the Blue Jays. Here's Adamson for Syracuse. Coming up on a minute left here in the first quarter. Back to Tyrell. Tyrell, a couple of hits there. Good call, Doucette's yeah, got that it. That was interesting. No call there. Four turnovers now for Syracuse. 
You know, both of these teams are physical teams. So, I, you know, I'm a defender, so I like, as long as they're safe, let them play a little bit. They just have to keep themselves in control. They're all incredible athletes, know what they're doing, but obviously have to be safe first. They've got to... Hannah Gillespie, yeah, the fans Sarah, wanted her to go yeah, so right did in. I, a little bit. I thought Sarah Cooper was going to slide up, but she held. It looked like Gillespie had a lane there, but opted not to. Over to Gilbert, being hounded by Maddie Baxter for Syracuse. Here's Poikendall. Yeah, few things fire up a team more than when a defender gets a goal. Gillespie thought better of it. You yeah. know, they just they haven't had possession as much, so the last few minutes, so I think it was the right decision. Gilbert gets crushed there. Two seconds left in the first quarter as well, and how big could this be? She scores here off the free position. One for one today. Got to work quickly here. Not a great angle. Baxter right on her heels. Baxter's got to back up. Yeah, she's only yeah. about a meter away. Good try, but yeah, she's got to go to the 12. That's a good catch there by the official. Gotta reset the clock, too. Yep. They just took it. Got to get it back to two. Good Syracuse is like, we are not giving up a goal here with two seconds left in this quarter. All right, here we go, Gilbert. Kimber's got, Howard's got to protect this pipe here. It's a low angle shot for Gilbert. Gilbert scores! Right before the buzzer at the end of the quarter. How about that? Buzzer beater, Lauren Gilbert. All smiles, a huge goal here at the end of the quarter, momentum-wise. She has scored the last two for Northwestern. It's a great job, quick off the hash, quick release. Cats up, 6-2 against the Orange. Six two Northwestern as we get set for the start of the second quarter. Rachel, here's what the Wildcats did to get things going. Allie Berkery getting her first goal of the year with a nifty little flip. And Koikendall getting that underneath dodge. Great stick control. Again, a nice feed there. Sam Smith with the goal. Freshman Jill Girardi. Finally, Lauren Gilbert, the last two goals for Northwestern, one off a dodge, and then as we just saw, the buzzer beater rip that top corner. Just two seconds left. First five goals were scored by five different players for Northwestern. Yeah, you see it there, and for Syracuse, four turnovers, and that's been tough here at the beginning part of this game. They've been winning the draw controls, but again, only scored off of one of those wins. Megan Tyrell and Olivia Adamson Second quarter is now underway here for Northwestern. Yeah, Syracuse needs to start converting on these opportunities that they're getting off the draw. And then Kimber Howard, just one save in that quarter. Mm -hmm. Northwestern is gonna keep, they're gonna get a lot of shots off. She's gonna have to step up and make some of these saves. I mean, if there is one player, and I know it's tough, you know, you have to try to focus on Gilbert. I mean, she's the one that pretty much single-handedly won that regular season matchup. She scored the game-tying goal, then the overtime goal for Northwestern in that win over Syracuse, 16 to 15. Yeah, I mean, she's just so talented and just so quick and determined. And, I, you know, she's certainly hard to stop. But then they've got Quickendall, they've got Girardi as well that can produce. So, you know, it's defensively for Syracuse really, really difficult. And I know it's kind of Monday morning quarterback now at this point, but getting that foul call with two seconds left and giving them that opportunity, you gotta be aware of time and, and score there, right, on that one if you're the defense. Yeah, it was a foul on a dodge, so certainly, like, probably was just trying to stop the ball, but oh, Sam Swart. Good effort. That's gonna draw a call here. Schwart worked her way in. It's a nice take by Sam Swart. She has a really unique cradle. Um, but she does a really good job with her cradle of, of really protecting the ball and using it to her advantage. All for one of the free positions so far for Syracuse in this game. They need this one here. 
She's been a constant for them, played in all 20 games this season. 26 goals, 13 assists. They could use one here. Swart. Oh, hit it. She goes in. Doucette's got it. And Players hitting the turf. Great stick to stick there against Swart. That Northwestern defender met her stick, matched it, so she kind of took all the power off that shot. And right back the other way, the Wildcats here. And Koykendall feeds it in front. And the one-timer on the shot from El Hansen doesn't go. And Syracuse has it. Incredibly unselfish play there by Northwestern. Maybe a little too unselfish. Any one of those could have been shots, but really great passing there. Yeah, I really thought Sammy White had the opportunity, right? Absolutely. 23. Yeah, she could have taken a shot, but I love the ball movement. Just couldn't quite convert there to a goal. Back to the defensive intensity, though, for a moment, because I know you love that as a former defensive player. They have really did a nice job of checking the sticks right on all the shots for Syracuse on those free positions. Yeah, on the eight meter, you don't get to, you don't see that as much anymore, but they have gotten in quick match stick to stick. That's twice now they've deflected an eight meter by Syracuse. I mean, it's really brilliant play to not get in there and get called for a foul in your body and when you just able to go after the stick like that and they've stopped two of those so Syracuse over two in the free position this time though they're gonna get a call and a push yeah that was Northwestern's Allie Burkery <laughs> Megan Carney Mike Carney on that hanging hash. We'll see if she elects to kind of take it in or with that sort of tough angle, pass it around behind. She's got Adamson behind. She's going to go up to Harris Chuck. Harris Chuck on the spin. Trying to get free. Double team. Wow. So, so that's the right call, a charge call against Harris Chuck. Defenders had established their position. They don't need to have their feet still, but. Kind of lowered her shoulder, and they had the position established. That is the right call. It is a charge. How about Harris Chuck? 51 for Syracuse. He tore ACL in the first game last year. Missed the rest of the season, of course, and then you know has really come back. You know this season, a graduate player, and has 63 goals for this Orange squad. They need her services. You're going to have a card coming out here. The yellow card. Northwestern fans love it as Schwartz has to go out. Getting a little chippy here early, and then Koykendall and Swar had a few things to say to each other there. Sam Swart will sit out for two minutes in pursuit. Yeah, that's, I'm not sure what she, what she was thinking there. You can't just hit somebody in the back like that. Just a little bit of frustration. And you were talking about Harris Chuck, and all she did was come back and set the all-time Syracuse score record. Right. Now, again, you know who was the, the record was held by trainer. By trainer, it, it was against Albany. Katie Rowan was coaches Albany, so it was basically a bunch of Syracuse greats in the house. Alyssa Murray Cometti was calling the game, so really the top four scorers in Syracuse history were all there to watch it happen. Wow. Pretty incredible. Yeah, how crazy is that? 260 for Kayla Trainer, the head coach at the time of the record, and then now 272 for Harris Chuck for Syracuse in their all-time history. Coming in to score for Northwestern, Leah Holmes taking advantage of the player up, and it's 7-2 Wildcats. Costly penalty there for Syracuse. Northwestern capitalizing on that player up opportunity. You know, when you're player off, it's, it's all about ball movement, getting that D to shift, trying to get them to slide. Just a beautiful face dodge there. Great job. Bounce shot there past Tower. And that was a player advantage, but the Syracuse defense kind of kind of try to help Power out a little bit, you know? It's, yeah. been, it's been tough. Yeah, I mean, it really, it's, it has been tough, and I've never stepped in the cage, so I have no idea what that's like. I think cross goalie is a hard position in, in sports, period, so you feel for Kimber Hauer there when they're player down particularly, but. I mean, the Orange have used Delaney Schweitzer a bunch this season as well. She's played in 13 games, the uh, junior backup to Hauer, and you know, I know Jason Gebhardt's done a really nice job in his fourth season, a former goalkeeper for the uh, Syracuse men's side. They won the national title in 95 with him there, and now he's been really kind of helping this team out, and the goalkeepers, and put them in the best position for this season. It's 
still loose here. Syracuse comes up with it with Cooper. Great job there by Sarah Cooper getting that loose ball. It's eight to two draw controls in favor of the Orange. They scored on only one of those eight draw control wins right off the bat. Girardi. How much does she bring to the table for this team? I mean, you came in talking about her draw control wins, right? 172, but she's sec second in scoring, fourth in assists, and she's closing in on 400 draw control wins in her outstanding career. She does a little bit of everything for Northwestern, and you can see by the way she plays, you know, her ride in the midfield is incredible. She has a lot of spunk, uh, a little spitfire, competitive. And you can tell she just loves the game. Trying to feed it in front to Dylan Amonti. Just the second turnover of the afternoon here for Northwestern. We're watching the quarterfinals, game three of four here today on ESPNU. Maryland a winner earlier, Boston College a winner. And then after this one, we've got UNC tonight against Stony Brook, the 1 8 matchup in a rematch of last year's quarterfinal. That was a three goal game. 5 0 run there by Stony Brook last year to overtake North Carolina. Would de if, if they're able to pull out that win, would certainly be the biggest upset mm -hmm. of the year. And North Carolina is just on a tear. I mean, they won 24 to two over Virginia last weekend. Tyrell. Naked Carney. Now here's Tyrell. Works around the defender. Fires it on Cage. Two sets. Got it. Great take there by Tyrell. She's able to just get that edge on her attack, on her defenders. Couldn't finish, but the six save there by Doucette is just having a, is having a great game so far, seeing the ball really well. Well, when you're seeing it well off the best player for the other yeah, team coming at you like easy. that, yeah. It's pretty good. Koykendall. Girardi. So, yeah, trying to, looks like they're trying to get maybe some shooting space calls here with those hesitations and those pump fakes. Good job by Syracuse staying out of shooting space. The D for Syracuse has, has gotten a couple turnovers, and, but they've got to convert on the opposite end. Take care of the ball. Here's Markey. Looks so effortless when she's yeah. running. Yeah. Gets it over for Carney. I mean, Carney was coming off the ACL from last year, too. I mean, it's almost like you can't speak of some outstanding player for Syracuse without saying they're either coming back from an injury or they had an injury. It's It's been unfortunate what they've gone through the last couple of years. Absolutely. But then, you know, Olivia Adamson with the ball now. Emma Ward did it last year. These players are given an opportunity to play when they may not have otherwise step up. And that builds for the future. Obviously, you don't want to have your best players go down, but when players are able to step up like that, you know, we lost Emma Ward to injury this year. I was so excited to see what she was going to do in her sophomore campaign, and Adamson is doing that this year for Syracuse. Paris Chuck shot cleaned up again by Doucette. Seven saves now for her. Yeah, no Emma Tyrell, no Jalen Jimerson, no Sierra Cockrell, no Emma Ward for Syracuse, and all they've done is get to this point with a chance to go to championship weekend yet again. Let's not forget about this. Northwestern, Coach Kelly and Monty Hiller here at home. Try 28-0 all time in NCAA tournament games here at Northwestern at home. She is the, has the best NCAA tournament record in NCAA history. About 83% uh, win, percentage wins in NCAA games, which is, is really just unheard of. Most of that in that seven-year tear they went on back right. to back to back to back to back. But 28 at home is, is pretty incredible. You know, we asked her about it, and she says she's, you know, she's not thinking about those 28. She's thinking about this one. So falling down on the shot that time was Carly Mahoney. Almost got it. Good back up there. Now Northwestern's Brennan Dwyer has it. Back to Gilbert. Shot clock is not reset. Five to shoot. Turning, shooting that time again. It was Mahoney. The save from Power. 
So it does reset this time to 60 seconds. That's, that's a great save by Hauer. Right back at him now with getting that rebound. Did he get a fresh 60? Poincandall gets it down low with a shot that time almost by Dwyer. That was a good play there. And again, now Howard trying to settle in here and help keep this team in it. And then another 60 now they get. It's playing defense for a long time. Coming up on two minutes, really, here now. In front, turning and scoring is Al Hansen. That happened fast. Their third reset of the shot clock. Al Hansen, just beautiful take around the crease there. Incredible job, ball movement. Koykendall gives it to Al Hansen. With the finish, pass up, 8-2. Accolades are outstanding for Kelly Amonte Hiller, 21st season, four-time National Coach of the Year, two-time Player of the Year, lacrosse Hall of Famer, and with her husband, Scott Hiller, on the sidelines as well. Talked to them yesterday about that dynamic. Oh, it's been outstanding, right? I mean, you can't be doing it for 21 years, right? If you've got something going <laughs> together pretty darn well, and they do. Absolutely. You know, we talk about the balance of their personalities. Kelly's super intense. Scott is a little bit more chill, but she said Kelly, you know, after games, Kelly's an introvert, wants to process. Scott wants to talk about it. So she said they sort of have learned the cadence post-win, post-loss, but mm -hmm. a great duo for this Northwestern team. Kelly, one of the one of the best ever to play, and now one of the best ever to coach. Maryland graduate from 1996. Miller was at UMass, 1990. They also got Shelby Fredericks over there on the sidelines helping out as well. And this Northwestern team now off to the fast start. Eight to two with 532 remaining in this first half here. Winner moves on to championship weekend, joining Maryland and Boston College as the other finalists for right now. As we got UNC and Stony Brook coming up later tonight, and we'll have the four set by the end of this evening on this Thursday. Yeah, and hit the head there that time was Girardi. Wildcats 2-0 all time in quarterfinal games against Syracuse. In 2019 with a win, 2007 with a win. We talked about a lot. They lost last year in the semifinals. Both were in championship weekend. This year only one will make it there. You're going to be on guard here, right? Syracuse defensively. They kind of, I don't say lull you to sleep, but they move it around, move it around. Then bang, they, they put it into another gear. Yeah, and you see that they, they're, they're working a zone and they've sagged in a little bit to try and clog that middle. Koykendall has it. She had Sammy wait there for a second right. with a great backdoor cut. Really, when you're playing a zone, that's what you want to do, run those cutters through, have them shift, and then you should be wide open there on the outside or that third or fourth cutter in the middle. Four in a row have been scored by Northwestern. They scored four in a row early. It was broken up by Olivia Adamson's goal for Syracuse. But the Orange have been scoreless for over 16 minutes, and they've only taken three shots. Trying to get it down to White. It's taken away, and Syracuse has it. That was Katie Goodale. It's the fourth turnover for Northwestern. Great pressure here yeah, by Lauren Gilbert here, on that yeah. ride. Yeah, they're not making it easy. I know you had said that. They're going to try to capitalize on some of these, but now it's Hauer. And they've taken almost 30 seconds off the shot clock now. 
Baxter on the run. Maddie Baxter. Dumps it over for Adamson. In front. A lot of contact yeah. there. And here comes Northwestern. They've got numbers here. Palermo for White. Crossfield, Koykendall. Oh, shooting space. Yes. Western two for two off their free position shots today. Just caught Bianca, Bianca Chevry sliding to ball, was in shooting space when she slid there. Koykendall, she scores. Nine to Northwestern. Three for three in the free position shots today. Koykendall with a crafty eight meter there. She did a really nice job kind of hesitated, looked like she was going to pass, and she's so dangerous with her passes, so she kind of stepped, looked like she's going to pass, ducks underneath. Little twist there with the release. Just that hesitation made Sarah Cooper hesitate and think, okay, she's going to pass, and then accelerated towards the cage. Great job there, Byron Korkendall. One of the most balanced players on this Northwestern team. A absolutely, and on an eight meter, usually you see a couple things. Either somebody just go full speed to goal or rip it from eight meter. That was just a really nifty play there. Looking like she's gonna pass, hesitating, accelerating to the cage. Great job reading the defense. Two goals, one assist already today for Koi Kendall. She had two goals and three assists in the last game. You mentioned her earlier about normally is that feeder. I mean, she had 44 assists last year for this team, which is a team high. She's got team high 35 assists now this year. Such a dangerous player, a threat in every which way, and she's made it nine to two. It's five in a row here by the Wildcats. That previous meeting was way back in early March. Yeah, but they, I mean, Syracuse still had Emma Tyrell. Sierra Cockerell went down with an injury in that game. So certainly different teams, and they've grown a lot since then. And this is what we've talked about on how that doesn't always give a representation of the game. 9-3 draw controls, and the team that's well, winning is down by seven. Almost the complete opposite yeah. with the goals. Yeah, if you had shown me the draw control stat only, I'd say, oh, Syracuse is up in this game, but not the case. Just have not been able to convert, and Madison Doucette's having a great day. This is really important here for Syracuse to get a goal before half. They've got to close that gap a little bit going into halftime. Big reason they've struggled a little bit is eight turnovers. So even getting the possessions and then giving it right back. So here they are now with a chance to get one on the board. They got to get a little bit of momentum. They've given up a four and five goal run by Northwestern. That shot you second a piece of it. Great take there by Tyrell. A little rocker dodge. Schweitzer. Savannah Schweitzer, 35. Now in front, oh, getting hit hard. This is Jenny Markey. Syracuse has not been able to convert on their eight meters yet today. They are 0 for 2. Jenny Markey, such a tough player. We saw she had a huge collision at the end of the Princeton game and was able to get back up. Here just took a very hard hit. Minute 13 to go. Markey. Who's set. Oh, standing has she been here today? Seven saves. 0 for 3 Syracuse on the free positions. Timeout taken. 101 remaining. Madison Doucette. We have the USA Lacrosse's sixes roster for the World Games coming up this summer as well. First, trying to propel her team to championship weekend as they lead it by seven. 
NCAA Women's Across coverage continues next week for the semifinals. We'll be in Baltimore for the action starting on Friday, May 27th at 3 o'clock Eastern, right here on ESPNU. For more information on the 2022 Women's Across Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all NCAA championships. Let's talk about this set here today. Madison just had seven saves on the day. She is seeing the ball so well. It's a great job. They're getting good looks at the cage. She's just falling all the way in. Harris Chuck there with the rip. No, this isn't, I like this timeout call by Imani Hiller. You know, they're up seven. There's a minute left. My, my guess, my prediction is they're going to set something up for the last shot of the half and try and go in into the locker room up eight. And, th and there's the story when you know when they're winning All right Matthew says playing well and when she's not had good games they haven't been able to pull through same ring same rings true for Syracuse honestly this season their 13 wins power's been at 44 percent their losses only at 18 percent very telling for sure and also the offensive numbers if you think about that Northwestern you were telling me about this earlier today when they score 12 or more goals Undefeated. Undefeated. 15 and 0. And they are three quarters of the way there already. Right. So let's talk about this Northwestern team for a moment here so you understand even what they're dealing with this year. They're playing without last year's Big Ten Attacker of the Year, Izzy Skane, right? She set the Northwestern, excuse me, single season scoring record. 98 goals, led the nation, averaging 6.1 goals a game. Not playing this year. Skane out. train out with an injury. And, you, you know, in talking to Coach Hiller about Izzy Skane, she talks about her leadership, her off-field leadership skills really just blossoming this year. And bad news for the rest of the lacrosse world, Izzy Skane has two years left to play. Yeah. Great news if you're a Northwestern fan. If you're not uh, all Northwestern, not so much. Thirty seconds left. Syracuse has to be disciplined here. I know you, you know that they're holding for the last shot, so you're tempted to kind of go and create something, but they've got to be disciplined. Sort of stay within themselves, just play good, solid D here, not give up a goal in these last seconds. Yeah, they gave up that goal with two seconds left in the free position, and Lauren Gilbert at the end of the first quarter. Absolutely right, can't have it again here. Here's White, 23, eight seconds left. Feeds it, Koykendall through traffic, somehow tried to flip it behind her head, can't get it done. And it's picked up by Kimber Howell, and that's the end of the first half. And it's been all Northwestern, obviously. Nine to two, Syracuse, two goals. That's the fewest in any half this season. They were shut out in the second quarter, and Northwestern's had seven different goal scorers in this quarterfinal matchup. Monty Hitler's got to be thrilled with this first half by the Cats. Doing a great job defensively. Seven scores to set is strong in the cage. They'll go up into this head, up into the half, Michigan here today in Evanston, Illinois, as we welcome you back to Northwestern, where the Wildcats lead the Orange 9-2, as we get set for the start of this second half. Mike Corey alongside two-time national champion, Hall of Famer, and to Wartan Trophy winner, Rachel DiCecco. Seven-goal lead here for Northwestern, and I didn't kind of see it like this, per se. We thought it'd be a little bit closer. Syracuse kind of shut out in that second quarter, have missed their last five shots, the lowest output in a half all season for the orange yeah syracuse is going to have to dig deep here if they want to come back here against the cats really a difficult first half for syracuse kimber howard only two saves held goalless the whole second quarter we see here lauren gilbert having a great day for northwestern two back-to-back -back goals so quick off the dodge and this one at the end of the first quarter just a killer for Syracuse, less than two seconds left, she got that shot off. And then Aaron Koykendall 
you know, she is a passing threat, but she's also a scoring threat. You see there, just a great job possessing good stick control and this nice fake off the eight meter with the hesitation. And it's seven different players that have put one through the net. I mean, there was the two by Gilbert and the two by Koykendall that you just talked about. But I mean, that's what makes it tough for a defense. Now, what do you think? You know, I mean, you got those two, that's hard enough. And then others have really stepped up today, too, as well. Absolutely. And that's what's been so hard for to defend UNC this year is because they have so many weapons. And we're seeing Northwestern today with, a, you know, Allie Burke here, first career goal. Mm -hmm. We've seen Koykendall with a goal. And Girardi now back at the center circle against Mascheski. And that has go that's probably the bright spot for Syracuse today. They, they have won the draw control battle, but just have not been able to convert that into goals. Northwestern's been outstanding in their free positions as well. They're three for three. That certainly hurt the orange as well as the defense a little bit. And I know as a former defenseman, this would be something that would hurt you a little bit. Just one cost turnover so far in the first half for Syracuse. Yeah, that is tough. I mean, that kudos to, to Northwestern for taking care of the ball and possessing. But we know Syracuse has found themselves in this position before we mentioned that Duke game earlier this year. They were down 9-2 and they came back. So they, we know they can come back against a, you know, a good team. Duke is a good team this year. Now Northwestern though, really firing on all cylinders. So they're gonna have to play tough D here and then start to convert on some of their offensive opportunities. Here's Koykendall. Gilbert sliding through, coming to the outside. Girardi in the middle as well. Dylan Amante puts it back. Girardi trying to slice through a double team. We got the call. Tried to split that double. I actually, I'd like to see it again because I thought that was actually pretty good defense there. I think they held position strong. Obviously, I'm not down on the field, so I can't see it as well as the ref. But from what I saw there, you know, I think that was it was solid D. Well, Girardi's going to have a chance to make it 10-2 here. Save made. Howard. Almost scored it past Howard there, but nice job getting on top of that. And Syracuse, now they got to get to work. And quickly. There's plenty of time left, but they've got to start to chip away at this lead. Markey comes over with it and gets it to Megan Carney. Winner moves on to championship weekend. Next Friday in Baltimore at Homewood Field. Maryland and Boston College, two of the four already. This is the best quarter that Syracuse has had this year, by the way. They're plus 40 in the third quarter. 58% of their scoring in this quarter. And then you got Doucette on the other side. It's going to be tough. Madison Doucette, another play, another save for Northwestern. She's got nine now nine today. Nine saves today. That was a nice take by Sam Swart, a good release. But Madison Doucette, great vision today. Just seeing that ball all the way in. Powering through that time, Kendall Halpern for Northwestern, 24. That's a good try to get that charge. That's what Harris was trying to yeah. do there. Both of these teams, we've seen them go so hard in the midfield. Well, if you're Northwestern too, you make the Syracuse defense work too as well, right? Yeah, I mean they want to they want to take their time a little bit to, to keep to keep possession and work that Syracuse D, but Syracuse did a nice job of holding them off, but they just kept giving them the ball back, and that's what makes it so hard to have to redefend after you use a shot clock or after Kimber Howard made a save. Poikendall cross field for Amante. Back to Amante, feeding it in front, catching, and a spinning shot that time from Samantha Smith over the top of the net, backed up here with just 11 to shoot. Gilbert, save, power. And this, this has to be Syracuse's ball. This is, this is the killer. They use all the, all the shot clock. 
Camber Hauer had a great save, and now the ball back in Northwestern stick. We said it earlier, that happened a couple of times, right? They played the, almost the entire 90-second shot clock, then they got it back twice, Northwestern did. Johnson. Great double there team go. there. Great job on that collapse, a clean check, and the second close turnover of the game. There we go. There you go, Katie Goodale that time. Leading the team with her 28th of the season. Goodale. For Adamson. She'll back it out. Savannah Schweitzer. Syracuse has not had a goal in more than 24 minutes. It's been a struggle here. Is it the Harris Chuck? It's been out of, out of bounds. bounds. Great defensive yeah. stand. Nine turnovers. It's frustrating. They have a trainer and company over on the sidelines for Syracuse. Now look out. Here's Gilbert. Coikendall. Back to Gilbert. Save Howard. She's trying to do everything here. She has started off the second half very strong. Five saves now. Kimber Howard. Her offense has got to help her out. Uh, they absolutely do. And that was a great save. You, Lauren Gilbert's probably one of the last people in the country you want to see coming down with a full head of steam. Great pass work, great passing there by Northwestern. And then there's a nice save there by Howard. You know, Kelly Amani Hiller talked about her team playing unburdened, and that's exactly how they're playing today. You know, we've got nothing to lose here. They're not putting pressure on themselves. They're not worrying about what's next. They're just playing, having fun, and, and the word unburdened is, is perfectly describes just the intensity and the belief that you see that Northwestern has in themselves right now. Yeah, because we asked about that, having that run, you know, and having all those titles under your belt and what each team, you know, thinks and feels that they have to kind of uphold, but they don't have that mindset. They've been able to play free and they put themselves in good position here and a chance to go to championship weekend if they can hold on here in the second half. And in this part of the season, you know, this is a long season. You are mentally drained, you are physically drained, and this is when all that mental energy has to be kind of put, to, put together and you've got to play with intensity and fire and you've got to have the stamina, the mental and physical stamina come tournament time. Harris Chuck, and they'll take that. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, they're going to wait off. Police violation. That is Once again. Another tough break there for Syracuse. Their 10th turnover. You had the out of bounds. Then you had that goal waved off in the crease. Yeah, there's just a, you know, a lot of things that will add up, you know, today. Let's go back to that here in a moment on that. Would have been third goal of the afternoon, Harris Chuck. Yeah, yep. stepped in, yeah. It's a good call there. Right, Let's go, Cut. Gilbert. Nice collapse there by Syracuse. Is this gonna go against the defense? Girardi charging through. The first collapse by Syracuse was clean. They are called on a foul on that second one. Three for four free positions here for Northwestern today. It'll be Girardi. Jill Girardi, number 15. Looking to make it 10-2. Rocket wide right. That was a great play there by Leah Holmes. Really didn't even go for the ball, just boxed out Syracuse so that she couldn't get it. Really, really good heads up play there by Leah Holmes. And Alamonte back for Gilbert. Koikendall. Girardi over the space. Under 20 to shoot. Bad 
that pass there. It's intercepted. Syracuse has it. Nice job by, by Cheverie there. Quicken all this looked at one a little too hard there before she passed it. Orange have missed their last seven shots. They're scoreless in the last 28 minutes. Trying to change that here. 6.45 remaining third quarter. Of course, it's always one of the keys when you play Syracuse is keeping Megan Tyrell in check, but that's what this Northwestern team has done. Coach Hiller told us yesterday, got her one for five on shots so far in this game today. Carney's been a little quiet as well, 22. Tyrell's got the one goal. Adamson has the other. Carney's only taken one shot. Here's Adamson trying to go one on one. Syracuse closest, putting it back in. It's going to be Savannah Schweitzer. No reset of that shot clock there. So we've got to get something going here in this last 20 seconds of this possession. Natalie Smith. Adamson looking for the cutters. Nobody there. Ten to shoot. Carney with five in the clock. She's got to go. Pass in front. Shot clock violation. Great defensive stand there by the Cats. Syracuse is just really struggling to get anything started here, Mike. A little bit more energy from Northwestern here today. And a little bit more precise with what they're doing, especially offensively. Seven different scores. We've had no goals yet here in this third. This is our score at halftime. We played 10 minutes. Winner moves on to championship weekend. You're watching the quarterfinals here on ESPNU. Game three of four. North Carolina and Stony Brook coming up at 7.30 Eastern time in our final game of the day. Nice ball, good job there by Maddie Baxter. Good ball movement by Northwestern. Nice read there by Baxter to come up with that check. Almost take away there as Gilbert came in, but Syracuse works it the other way on the clear. Too high in the pass, looking for Schwartz. A little ill-advised. Fourth failed clear of the day for Syracuse. I mean, it all adds up, right, Rachel? I mean, a few failed clears, a few turnovers, and winning the draw controls. We're not getting really many opportunities. Three position shots have worked out well for Northwestern today. We've taken advantage of a couple of player up opportunities also. Scored with two seconds left at the end of the first quarter. It's a bunch of backbreakers. Yeah, you know, individual, individually not gonna yeah. make the difference, but when you put all those together, and then Dylan Amani just piling on here. in the middle. Crafty release there by Monty. Cats up on the orange, 10-2. NCAA women's across quarterfinals continue here today. Northwestern leads Syracuse right now 10 to 2. We've got Stony Brook and North Carolina coming up next. That's at 730 Eastern right here on the U. And the winners will all meet next Friday in Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, right now these seedings have played out perfectly. We've had no upset so far. Maryland just dominating Florida State up win one by 13. Loyola was close to BC and then BC pulled away. Right now we've got the 3-2 matchup. Looks like if things continue this way, we'll have Northwestern get the four and then 1v8 tonight. Stony Brook looking for the upset. What about that matchup with UNC and Stony Brook and Coach Spolina for Stony Brook coaches with UNC's Jenny Levy on the U.S. national yeah, team? Yeah, that'd make for interesting. an interesting World yeah. Cup uh, experience for everybody. But yeah, I mean, Stony Brook, I, I, you know, they feels like they're constantly underestimated, underseeded. I think that, you know, that eight seed 
puts them right in UNC's path, and that's just the, the sort of the hardest path there is right now. And just really kind of unfortunate, but it feels like it happens to Stony Brook year after year. Well, of course, a ton has changed, you know, from last year to this year, but, you know, North Carolina still an outstanding shooting space to call here. Another free position coming up for Northwestern. But it was a three goal game, you know, last year, 14 to 11. So and North Carolina has just been rolling through the competition, 24 to 2 in the win over Virginia in the second round. Could be 11 to 2 here, Northwestern. We'll see. Poikendall. It's a tough angle. We yeah. saw Gilbert score off of that angle in the first quarter, but it's a tough shot there. Unleashing on that one. She has it back here. We've got three minutes and 15 seconds to play in the third. <laughs> Northwest just done a really nice job here. Another crease, crease violation. violation. Except for the last three free positions, they've failed on. They went three for the first three in a row for their last three, but they lead it by eight as we're under three minutes to go in the third. What about Syracuse and trying to get some different players involved or some of your stars here on the offense? What else are you seeing that, that or what do you want to see that's not happening right now as we're down by eight? couple things I think you know their ball movement and Northwestern's doing a great job of reading their plays and their and their shots are just off today I mean sometimes you just have a bad shooting day they've missed their last eight shots scoreless for 32 minutes so they've got you know here they're isolating here for Tyrell but they're holding her and then it's just kind of clogged there like there's just not a lot of space for them to work with so they've got to put those cutters through the middle Adamson being shut down here. Great one-on-one -on -one defense there by Northwestern against Tyrell and then Adamson. That's Berkery, number six. Here's Ali Palermo. Oh, and now finally, Syracuse getting on the board. Their third of the day. They needed that. They needed something. It's been forever. And that time they gave Emma Ty or excuse me, Megan Tyrell more space to work with. Really challenged down that alley. You see it really set up, and she does this little hop here. And that, see how quickly she switched back to her left. So quick, give herself an angle to shoot. Had she kept it in her right, she would have had a, not as good of an angle, but she able to get back to her left and sneak it by Doucette. And with that goal, she's two away from the single season record. She scored the first goal of the day here today in this game, and then Northwestern scored four in a row. Adamson came back with one, and then it's been six in a row for the Wildcats until that goal from Tyrell. Five goals last game, two here today. As you see it, though, the first goal since 4.58 left in the first quarter. Well, this is what it takes, Rachel. You got to get a couple going in a row. Absolutely, here, right? they've got to get this ball move, moving. It'll be the first time today that they get back-to-back -back goals. If they can get it here on this possession, minute and a half remaining in the third. And it almost feels like a, a little bit to me like they're waiting for it, it, the, the perfect setup, almost too perfect. Sometimes right. offensively, you've just got to get into a flow, and if you're too structured and you're too sort of set on exactly what you're going to do, it, it makes you rigid, and that feels a little bit like what's happening to Syracuse today. Agreed. There's Carney. Looking for cutters. Oh, got Carney. a held yeah. in the stick there. Tyrell, they wanted her again. Northwest for possession. Offsides there, feet touch the line. Got numbers here. Sammy White feeds it Gilbert. Gilbert shoots and scores. Hat trick for Lauren Gilbert here today for Northwestern. They get the goal right back with 52.8 seconds remaining in the third. Gilbert from Sammy White. Sammy White, just her second game playing offense here for the Cats this season. Went from Mitty to Dean out of offense. and. That release from Gilbert is so hard to stop. She's coming full speed, and it just comes out of her stick so quickly. 
That's a really tough one for Kimber Hauer. One minute in between goals, too. Yeah, I mean, they haven't been able to close this gap at all this quarter. And down eight with just, just under a minute. They're going to need to go on a, a run and, and a big one. I mean, even if you, you know, even five goals, you're still, they're still down a fair amount and against this Northwestern D and Doucette, who's having such a great day. Gilbert's two points away from 100 this season. 15th nationally in points coming in for the first team all Big Ten selection. We're under a minute remaining. So it looks like they were. They were unclear up. on who made that draw foul and originally had it signaling towards Syracuse. Now they gave it back to Northwestern. And some of the Syracuse players felt like it was their possession and they realized that it's not. So here's Girardi. And you're in no hurry here if you're Northwestern. Uh, they should wait for the last shot of this quarter. We had three total goals so far in the third. Two by the Wildcats, one by the Orange, and Tyrell, her second of the day. Girardi. Backed up by Hanson. Got to move quickly here. Five seconds left. Oh, they do, and they get it. It's Girardi. That magic number 12 goal for Northwestern. Just, you know, if you're Syracuse, that's just so defeating. Under two seconds left in this quarter. Her 49th of the year. Think about it, he had Gilbert with the goal of .2 seconds remaining. I mean, if that, whatever, at the end of the first quarter, she scored on the free position, they had two seconds left and she scored. And now here, this one in the third with 1.8 remaining. Yeah, now we're trying to get back in there. And nobody slid. I think maybe a miscommunication there. Gilbert had, or excuse me, Girardi had all the room in the world to get that shot off. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, this Northwestern team was beat by the Syracuse squad in the semifinals last year. Now third consecutive year in postseason. We're trying to return the favor and get the championship weekend. And they are one quarter, 15 minutes away from doing that. 12 to three, the score at the end of three. Coach Kelly and Monty Hiller trying to go to 29 and 0 at home in tournament games. Turnovers today for Northwestern defensively. Doing a great job playing clean defense. A little physical there, but coming up with that turnover. Just reading, reading Syracuse's attack really well. High pressure. We've had a few really good big turnovers in the midfield off of some missteps from Syracuse, but great contribution from this Northwestern D today. Syracuse, as you said, the third quarter historically has been their best this season, only able to come up with one goal. They've got to pull a rabbit out of their hat here. Four shots, but five turnovers. Yep, that's been the story a little bit today for the Orange. Been fighting hard all year, battling through some injuries. You can see the numbers. 16 a game they average this year. Only three today, Northwestern. Already with the 12 goals. Going to stay undefeated in that category. And 15 minutes away from getting their bags packed and set to head to Baltimore, Maryland for next weekend. Uh, yeah, more bad news for Syracuse. We're just one goal away from a running clock, and they need time. They've got to start to get some of these goals back. Said it before we went to timeout. 28-0 at home in tournament games with Coach Hiller. Phenomenal. Picture perfect day here today from Evanston, Illinois, just north of Chicago. Eighty-one degrees. This Northwestern team played all of their home games indoors in the practice facility, other than the last two, and then this one here today. 
Yeah, now, and now Northwestern, and I don't expect them to cruise. That's not the word I would use, but I would expect them to take their time here, use up the clock. That's, you know, that's the biggest, the clock right now is the biggest enemy of Syracuse. Just not a lot of time to get these nine goals, on, you know, on the board. Well, that's been crazy, because you said, like, with Syracuse, and I agree that they were looking and trying to find that perfect opportunity, and it just never really came because of the stellar defense from Northwestern. You see Northwestern taking some time, but it doesn't feel like they're looking for a perfect time. They just seem to get something moving and get the, it the working. The flow is there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're moving well. They're seeing each other well. Not in that case a miss, a miss pass, but, yeah, I mean, Syracuse offense just looks a, just a little too rigid or just can't get anything going today. Top seeds in this tournament have been outstanding. Here comes Jenny Markey for Syracuse. And Doucette today, we said so much about her play. Madison Doucette, the senior goalkeeper from Northwestern. Tyrell did a nice job there of shading her, def uh, blocking her defender so Markey had a clear shot and then Doucette with just a nice job coming up with that. 10 saves. Saw Maryland earlier today. No trouble with their game against Florida, 18 to five. Boston College pulling away against Loyola, 20 to 13. Got Northwestern well in control here against Syracuse. And then obviously the overwhelming favorite tonight, North Carolina, the one seed up against number eight seed, Stony Brook. And gotta feel like those are, you know, the top teams and for good reason. I mean, I, it's kind of playing out according it, to the way most it, people it, thought, right? It absolutely is. And you know, these legacy programs, if it ends up being BC, Maryland, Northwestern, North Carolina in that Final Four, just, you know, the history of those teams. So many national championships between the four of them. Battle here, Ford in front. Gilbert. Got, yeah, it's about 10 seconds here. Great D there. Five to shoot. Gilbert. Lost it. It's a really nice defensive stand there. Tess, I, think it was, I believe that was Tessa Query. Yeah. Defender. 11th turnover there by, C, by Northwestern. But this time they play great defense for the entire shot clock. I know it's late here, okay? And they're up by nine points, but you know, they didn't give it back to him. You know, they didn't. Make a save, couldn't get the rebound. I mean, that's happened multiple times today. And they've had to play defense for upwards of close to two minutes. Yeah, I mean, they had a, a, a lot of good stops today, but either the you know the shot ended up in a rebound that they got, or North uh, Northwestern was able to get it right back. Three and a half minutes gone by in the fourth. And now this is this is really tough because if you're Syracuse, you don't you don't have a lot of time to work with, but you don't want to rush and take a bad shot either. So you got to balance that urgency but with smart decision-making. A lot of bright spots this year. This Olivia Adamson has been one of them. Number one, the freshman from Petersburg, Florida. Scored nine goals in this tournament here this year. Has one today, one of the three, one of the three for Syracuse. Tyrell's got the other two. Fighting through all comers here is Natalie Smith. Got taken away. And Northwestern and Ali Palermo. Ali Palermo is having a great day. We haven't spoken about her enough, and shame on me as a defender, but first team all time, big, all Big Ten defender. Just a solid, solid defender. Great, great fundamentals. You know, Kelly talked about her leadership on the defensive end. She, she's running everything on the defensive end, leading that unit along with Doucette. Yeah, Palermo, number 11 in white for Northwestern. Last two years, first team All Big Ten defenders. You said 109 ground balls this year, second or total in her career, second highest total in history since 2002 in this Northwestern group. So as much as we talked about offense a little bit here, the defense today for the Wildcats. Oh, yeah, I mean they've held Syracuse to three goals. That's it's unbelievable for a team that's averaging 16 a game to have them only with three now in this fourth quarter is remarkable. Tyrell. 
think they're taking a little bit too much time off. You know, I think within 30 seconds, they've got to start initiating right away. Harris Chalk misses. Stays with Syracuse, wondering where she's been a little bit today as well. 51, Harris Chuck, I and mean, we talked about Tyrell, of course, she has a couple goals. What about Carney, 22? Some of their top players held in check. Harris Chuck again, spinning, and she's got two defenders all over at all times. Yeah, I mean, that is great D there by Northwestern. They ended up fouling there at the end, but, you know, Harris Chuck is so strong and so dominant with the ball, and she just held great body position and stayed with her. Coming up on nine minutes left. Harris Chuck will start it. Adamson. A hold here. Now on the check against Maddie Baxter. Smith now will get an eight meter. Freshman Sam Smith. Oh, I'm sorry. Other way around. Yeah. Baxter there Baxter. over the eight meter. Freshman Sands with the foul. Baxter, saved you set. 0 for 4 now in the free positions. So you got Tyrell, who's 2 of 6 today. Oh, and striking oh. through is Gilbert again for Northwestern. Exclamation point as it's a 10 goal lead with 8.40 remaining. Just a brutal series there for Syracuse. The missed eight meter and then fast break caught Hauer up and out of the cage, open net essentially. The clock will run now with 10 goal lead. Hauer was trying to mark up Smith it looks like. And then Gilbert are back four goal games. This is her back, back to back four goal games for Lauren Gilbert. Gilbert shooting four for six today. It was a good timeout by Kayla Trainer. They want to stop that clock. So, so far here in this 2022 NCAA tournament, 50 goals have been scored by Northwestern, the most of any team. They lead by 10 in the fourth. There is today's player of the game brought to you by Capital One. Madison Doucette, coming off a 16 save performance in the first round, has done an amazing job for Northwestern today against some great shooters. Emily Harris, Chuck, Megan Tyrell, Sam Swart. So prepared, seeing the ball so well. 10 saves today so far for Doucette with eight and eight and a half minutes left in this game. She's today's Capital One player of the game, Madison Doucette for Northwestern as they are eight minutes and 40 seconds away from getting set to go to Baltimore for a championship weekend next Friday in the semifinals. Running clock now. Running clock. So, you know, Syracuse has two, one timeout left now, excuse me, so they'll, they'll want to use that to stop it if there's another goal. And then after that, there's not a whole lot they can do. Fifteen wins this year for Doucette. She was at a 43% save percentage. We talked about it. Then in the losses, she was at 35%. So I mean, it drops down, you know, fairly considerably. But how about today? Look at her percentage 77%. today. 77%. If Madison Doucette continues to play at this level, it is going to be tough to beat Northwestern. And we've talked about the goalie play this year. You know, Emily Sterling from Maryland is having an incredible season. All first team it will, I think, will be a first team All American, if not second team. We've got Moreno for UNC, Charlie Campbell for Stony Brook, and Doucette now for Northwestern. And these are the teams that are making it, you know, into the into this Final Four. It's going to be huge for them when they're going up against, you know, BC and or Stony Brook or North Carolina. Boston College. With a win today, 20 goals. They had 13, four, and they had Maryland, 19 before. They had 18 today. Then you have this Northwestern team that has just been on a tear as well. 22 goals, 
and 15 and now here 13. You see, you can't see it. We can see it because we're here. Obviously, camera isn't catching it. Kimber Howard is up at the restraining line, and that's really, you know, if there's a turnover, they've got an extra person essentially to lock that down and try and prevent the ball from getting to Northwestern's offensive end. But we, we just saw last time how risky that can be if you don't execute well. Swart has it and gets it back up top here. Schweitzer. Carney, who's set again, is adding on to her player of the game performance today. Number 11, and under seven minutes left. And then again, Howard's going to get caught again if she doesn't hustle. Yeah, finally does get back there in the goal. It's time to use clock here for Northwestern. I know this this has not gone in any way how Syracuse has won it, but you've got to give them credit for what they've battled through this year, making it this far. Well, certainly, everything that Gary Gate had got going here with this program, and Kayla Trainer taking over this year, played for Gary. Yeah, I mean, Kayla Trainer has done an incredible job with this team, and the future is so bright for Syracuse with her at the helm. and the talent and the growth that they have in this program and it just today was just not their day it really nothing really has gone their way and credit to Northwestern for really executing across the board that's how Simpkins getting in there too for Syracuse but that's kind of been what's happened here today as do said it's just been a roadblock there in front of the goal and I think you've talked about it with Northwestern I mean the defense defense has just been outstanding that's oh big collision there Turned out to be a good foul as query that time hit. El Hansen was, was wide open and no defenders on her in front of the net. It would have been a one on none there against Hauer. The Northwestern going to be moving on to championship weekend and they're going to take on the winner of that North Carolina Stony Brook game, which comes your way tonight, 7.30 Eastern time right here on ESPNU. We'll get you set up for that game. And then it'll be Maryland and Boston College in the other semifinal next Friday. And I know we're always looking ahead, right? I mean, in the way the North Carolina's been playing this year, we're gonna, everybody's kind of vaulting them already into the title game. Well, let's just, you know, say that's the case. I know there's some teams that say, hey, well, who could give them the best game? Well, hey, how about this Northwestern team first in the semifinals potentially if they get there how could they do if their defense holds up the way it held up here today yeah defensively if, if Doucette has a day like she had today and their D holds steady you know that's the thing with North Carolina they have so many offensive weapons so many options to go with and you know so I think North you've got to play an almost near perfect defensive game against them to have a shot and Northwestern certainly doing that today second goal for Samantha Smith today as well for her number 19 we're not counting Sony Brook out yet. Right, right. You never know. 14-11 last year, and that was big because North Carolina had to go on a 5-0 run at the end of the game. I mean, mm -hmm. Sony Brook had them last year, and you know, everyone, I, you know, everybody thought last year that it was going to be a, a run for North Carolina at the championship. So anything can happen come tournament time. Gilbert with the assist after picking up the hat trick in her previous goal. Smith with her second. Yep, loving it. Here today, Northwestern. This beautiful Thursday afternoon at home. They're going to be 29 and 0 under Coach Kelly Amonte Hiller's leadership at home in tournament games. They're going to avenge last year's semifinal loss to this Syracuse team. They're going to go to 3 and 0 in quarterfinal tournament games against the Orange as well. Yeah, and if you're Northwestern, I mean, this is exactly how you want to be playing going into that Final Four weekend, your best lacrosse of the year. So confident, and we said it earlier, but this Kelly described her team so perfectly. They are playing unburdened. They're having fun. They're, they're playing together. They're enjoying every moment, and when you're clicking like that and that's the feeling you have, this is what happens on the field. And I think, you know, we're, we're going to be in for a really exciting Final Four, regardless of who wins this next game. Big thanks to our crew today, our producer Jody Dank, our director Brent Lancaster, TDE Ryan Eccles, pressing the buttons, along with Jim Piscatelli, Cam Ellsbury, 
Tom Small, Tim Way, outstanding crew here today in Evanston, Illinois. We appreciate it. Many, many others as well. What about our guy, Russ Dillon, on stats? The, the godfather <laughs> of stats, Russ Dillon, here with us. As goal is scored here for Syracuse. Our fourth of the day, but as you've heard the saying as it goes, a little too little too late here coming up on two minutes left in the contest. And that puts, yeah, I know Meg Tyrell's not thinking about this right now, but puts her one away from the single season record, but too little too late, as you said. It's a nice take there. She does a, such a great job of getting around her defender and then squaring her body and giving herself the right angle. It was definitely a, probably a held whistle there on that on that take as well. See her stats here. All first team All American last year, two time first time All AC, first team All ACC, and up for the Tuaretan Award this season. Losing today will make that you know we're very difficult. We talk about you know usually you got to get to that Final Four if not win the championship to win that award, but. Yeah, 202 goals in her career, three today. She's three of seven shooting. How about the rest of the team? One, one for 12. One 12. Yeah, yep. a tough shooting day for Syracuse. And this is definitely not how, how these grad students and seniors wanted to go out, but so much to be proud of for this team. And they're battling till the end, which is what you want to see. Yeah. Swart. Deflected. Caught, they caught Northwestern in a, yeah, a goalie what, sub there. Yeah, change of the goalie right. Yeah, Open good, net. Good job by the D holding steady. Elena Harris has now come in and <laughs> somehow avoid a scare there, but it's under a minute left and it's a 10 goal lead. It's Northwestern's going to be moving on. And that's the story. I mean, they had no goalie in the cage and Northwestern found right. a way. I mean, to that stop sort of sums yeah. up the day for Syracuse, unfortunately. <laughs> exactly. Ball knocked away in front of the net. Clock's going to wind down here today. You set. Gave up four goals at 11 saves, 73% for Northwestern. Clock winding down in this quarterfinal matchup. Wildcats out of get one for good measure at the end. Anna Johnson. Celebrations on. 15 to four, the final. Northwestern wins it and moves on to championship weekend. That's a heartbreaking end of the game there for Kimber Howard. Northwestern back the final four again. We'll take on the winner of North Carolina Stony Brook. Now 29-0 and 0 at home in NCAA play. Also want to congratulate Syracuse on a great season. Kayla Trainer, 26 years old, her first year as head coach. You know, some people said she's too young, she's not ready. And even though today didn't go as planned, what an incredible season. And their future is so bright. 15-6 and six on the campaign. And you're right, there's a lot that has happened this year for them and able to deal with a bunch of injuries and he lost you know that outstanding goalkeeper and asa goldstock you know and howard you know, admirable job along with schweitzer and even hannah van minimum who's come in a little bit this year as well and you, know, you had injuries to emma ward to tyrell sierra cockrell Jalen jimerson and orange continue to battle through but it was not their day today it was northwestern with a 15 to 4 win Outstanding effort here at home to move on to championship weekend next Friday in Baltimore, Maryland. And here it is. We've got one game remaining. The Tar Heels and Stony Brook will do battle at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time right here on ESPNU to close out our quadruple header coverage in the quarterfinals. And then the semis will be set for next Friday, May 27th. Well, if, you're, if you picked all the favorites in your bracket, you're doing pretty well so <laughs> yeah. far. We have had no upsets. Made Madness yet. One opportunity left in this quarterfinal round for there to be an upset. North Carolina at, at home looking to get back to that final four. 
and finally win that national championship for that senior class. They haven't won since 2016. Mm -hmm. Really, really obviously want to win that one. They've won six ACCs in a row, and Lauren Gilbert having a great season herself, looking to do the same thing for her Wildcats. Total team effort here today, really, for this Northwest.